Hi YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my uh, review of the of two family movies that I saw recently. Not with family, which is, I guess, weird, but um, The Muppets and Hugo. Uh, first, I'll start with The Muppets. Um, okay, I grew up watching, uh, well, I grew up when I was a kid, I watched Sesame Street and uh, The Muppets, and, you know, so... I mean, I loved, you know, The, the Muppets, uh, Take Manhattan... I watched it all the time when I was a kid. The Michael Caine Muppets Christmas Carol is actually still my favorite version of a Christmas Carol. Um, so I kind of went into this with high expectations, but you know, kept it at bay. Um, and I wish I didn't have high expectations because while there were moments in it that were absolutely worth watching the movie. There are moments throughout that are like sprinkled throughout the movie that are com that completely make the movie worthwhile. Overall though, it was really kind of like uneven um, and actually a little disappointing. Um, basically, it's uh, Jason Siegel and his brother, who's a Muppet, um, travel to uh, Hollywood along with Siegel's girlfriend, Amy Adams, girlfriend of 10 years, Amy Adams, who... Um, to go see uh, the Muppet um, like factory or whatever um, and when they get there they find out that it's been like pretty much dormant and they're about to lose the property to uh, Chris Cooper who's a you know a rich guy from Texas his name is Tex Richmond and he wants the oil that is sitting underneath the um, the foundation of the Muppet like uh, studio where they used to shoot the Muppet show and everything like that. Um, I'm not going to get into the whole Fox News thing because, I mean, I don't know. I Isn't every bad guy that's from Texas in a movie like After Oil or something like that? Or it's not really unoriginal to show a, a guy from Texas that's After Oil. Um, you know, it's so... Uh, whatever. Um, but plot-wise, it didn't really matter. It was more about... Um, if the movie could be, you know, fun, and um, could have, you know, the the just the the humor, like the warmth and the heart that the earlier Muppet stuff had, um, I will say they succeeded with the humor mostly. There are some pretty good in jokes, um, but the humor is not um, really like it's just particularly not that great. Um, and not even, like, I, I'm, there's one thing to say, oh, it's for kids. Like, yeah, I understand that, but I still laugh at, you know, that stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, still. Um, what else? Trying to think. Uh, the songs in the movie were, for me, kind of disappointing because, one, they were written, I believe, I don't know if all of them were written, but they were, most of them were written by uh, Brett McKenzie from Flight of the Concords. Um, and they did have some great, like, you know, one, like, one-liners here and there, like, some lyrics in the song, but the only one that I found to be memorable was in my, uh, Man or a Muppet, uh, which I really liked. It's like a duet with Jason Siegel and a Muppet character, and then the other, uh, Muppet character, Muppet character, I forget his name, the main one from the movie, uh, he sings along with, uh, his human version, who's played by Jim Parsons from The Big Bang Theory. So that was a, it was a pretty fun uh, fun scene. So I really like that song, um, but just not particularly. Um, I don't just wasn't particularly strong. I mean, Chris Cooper does a rap, and while that would assume to be, well, you, well, you think that would be funny, it ended up being kind of painful for me to watch. So maybe some of you found it funny. You saw it. I didn't. I thought it was painful. Um, I was kind of like wincing away at stuff. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. All the, like, the voices and everything like that was great. All the cameos, you know, were there, were pretty funny. Uh, like I said, Jim Parsons, Zach Galifianakis was funny. Um, Neil Patrick Harris, uh, I think Selena Gomez, and a couple other people. Um, but, uh, but, you know, funny, not like over the... Th My favorite one was the Jim Parsons one, because he was singing along in the song that I happened to really like, so... Uh, let's see... I will say what they 100... Oh, by the way, before I get into what they got right, Jason Siegel and Amy Adams were really good, and I liked... I was worried that they were going to be at the forefront of the movie, and they weren't. They're, they're, those characters were on the back burner. It was like the Muppets like were the main people. Um, 
So that was good, but because of that, it kind of the fact that they were in the background, it left their story kind of just. It really just felt like story B the whole time we we got to it. Um, like re, it felt like just completely secondary. But uh, but whatever. Maybe I'm nitpicking with some of this stuff. I don't know. But uh, as far as what worked go, every moment that the movie got any felt like getting anywhere near nostalgia worked for me completely. And this is what this is why anyone that ever watched them up as grown up or Sesame Street or whatever, this is why I recommend going seeing this. It's for those moments when you, you know, you see them do the Muppet Show again or they sing like Rainbow Connection or um, Kermit remembering like older days and stuff like that. It uh, Those things are completely, make the movie completely worth it. Um, and they're and they're in throughout the movie. It's not like some stuff early on, um, but every time I was getting a little like, you know, feeling like this movie was like mediocre, there would be like a moment like that again, and I would just like completely perk up and everything. Uh, so yeah. Uh, plus the movie had an ending, at least uh, sort of an ending that I didn't expe I'd expect they were going to completely go for, uh, and then one that you know I would expect they would go for, but. Um, but still, okay, so if you're a fan of the Muppets uh, at all, I would recommend this. If you're, um, you know, if you have kids or something like that, I would, you know, recommend going to see this. You'll probably enjoy it, too. Um, otherwise, I'll give it, I'm going to switch to letter grades instead of number grades, because I think my number grades are just a little too, doesn't represent things, like, as well as, like, a letter grade would. So I give the Muppets a B-. minus. Um... I wish I enjoyed it more, but I didn't. But like I said, the nostalgia stuff makes it completely worth it, so B-. minus. Okay, on to the other movie I saw, which was Hugo, the new Martin Scorsese uh, film that's getting a ton of like award recognition. It's not doing great at the box office, but award-wise, it's doing really, really well. Um, I will say, throughout the first like hour and a half of the movie, I was thinking, this is, you know, really well done. Um... It's about a, a boy who's uh, who's lost his father, who'd played by Jude Law, and the last thing his father his father and he were doing were fixing up a little like robot man, and the robot man has a heart shaped key that he's trying to find. Um, the boy lives in the train station, comes to find Ben Kingsley character who works there. Uh, ben Kingsley takes his notebook that has all the stuff, all the notes that his father wrote down about the you know the robot guy. Ben Kingsley gets pissed off, takes the notebook away. Uh, Hugo, the main character, goes to Kingsley's house, meets up with a girl who happens to have the heart key, and so on and so forth. I won't go into the plot after that. But uh, I will say the first like hour and a half of this movie, I was thinking it was well done. Um, but, you know, solid movie, not great. The last half hour is really, really well done and pushes the movie from good to really good. Um... I didn't see it in like 3D or anything like that. I heard the 3D is um, is uh, is as ba as good as it's been used like ever. But uh, I don't really care about that. The movie looked really really good. Um, it still has all of Scorsese's like visual tricks and everything like that. But uh, yeah, as far as the actors go, the main character Hugo. I'm not sure. I don't even know the actor who plays him. He was good. He had a couple of line line readings here or there. They weren't the best, but otherwise really good performance. Um, his friend in the movie, a girl played by Chloe Moretz, who, um, who I first saw her in 500 Days of, 500 Days of Summer, she played Joseph Gordon-Levitt's, like, younger sister, and she, um, she was also Hit Girl, and, uh, the vampire in Let Me In, the remake of Let the Right One In. Those two movies, Kick-Ass and Let the Right One, uh, and Let Me In, were kind of underseen, but, uh, she was great in both, and she's great in this, and she's, uh, she's gonna be Tim Burton's, uh, Dark Shadows movie next year. She's someone that's, I think, like, really like to watch that's going to really do something with acting. She probably has more talent than most of the women in Hollywood, to be honest. Um, she was great in this. Ben Kingsley was fantastic. Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen proves that he's more than just Ali G or, or, or Borat with this. Um, I'm looking forward more and more to seeing him in... Uh, he's going to be in Tarantino's Django Unchained next year, along with uh, Singing Again in Les Miserables. Uh, Les, Les, Les Miserables musical and um, before he does a Freddie Mercury film so uh, I have really high hopes for him and um, 
I'll say that the movie it has like a really nice magic quality about it, and it ends up being about the movies in general, about the about the movies like representing, uh, kind of like living like dreams and stuff like that. It's if this doesn't sound like something you would enjoy, then don't bother watching it. But if it's something that thinks that you might, you know, might, I guess, tug in your heartstrings or whatever you want, to, you ever want to call it, um, I would completely suggest. If you're just a lover of film, I would say watch it. Um, it's not. It's a weird, like, kind of family movie where I don't think many families would. Um, let's say if you're like a parent, I would say if you're plan to be the parent that's going to show, you know, your child like Wizard of Oz before they ever see something like, you know. E.T. or whatever like that, then um, I would say this is the kind of movie that they would also like or you would like to show them. Um, but I don't want to spoil it, but I'll just say that um, this movie was a straight up, like, you know, B for me for about an hour and a half and then uh, it just really, like, brought it home the last, oops, shuts off, brought it home the last uh, half hour for me and uh, I'd probably push it to I don't know if it's a B plus or an A minus. Probably an A minus, um, which actually probably puts it pretty high up in my the movies that I've seen this year. Um, might even push it ahead of like uh, Super Eight, which m would put it into I think the third place for me, um, behind Eyes of March and uh, Warrior right now. So that's where I'm at. Um, but all right, I'm gonna stop this here. Um, let me know what you thought. If you've seen these, if not, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm going to do the Dexter finale uh, after Dexter's over, and then I'm going to probably do a lot more movie stuff considering all the TV shows that I watch will be off the damn air. So, uh, yeah. All right, guys. Later.